With the latest on WWE's view of a Goldberg return and more, this is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. WWE will no longer be selling DVDs with the final one hitting shelves this week, Ringside News wrote. In a significant shift, WWE has decided to bid farewell to its home video releases, marking the end of an era for physical DVD and Blu-ray collections. The final DVD release, Survivor Series 2023, hit the market on December 26th, as reported by PW Insider. This decision comes in response to the changing landscape of the entertainment industry, with a declining market market for physical media. WWE had previously revealed that they would no longer be dedicating their time and resources to home video production, and it appears that this change will apply not only to the UK market but worldwide. WWE Home Video UK had already announced that WWE was withdrawing from the home video category, opting not to renew any licensing deals in the new year. Wrestling DVD Network has reported that this is a global decision, effectively bringing an end to WWE. WWE home video at the close of the year. House of Wrestling confirmed this news and spoke with a source within WWE who stated, the home video business has long been in decline and it will no longer be a place where the company dedicates time and resources. Celebrating the birth of his child, WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunter posted this photo to X, writing, This morning our son entered the world. What a blessing. Giving his top four pro wrestlers that could cut a promo, The Undertaker said this on his Six Feet Under podcast. Coming in at number four, My Dark Horse, Double A, Arn Anderson. Arn had that unique ability to make you feel what it was he was going to do in the match. Such an eloquent talker. He never stumbled on his words. He had a thought and he related in a way that made you believe that everything he said was going to happen. It was phenomenal. Absolutely one of the best ever. Coming in at number three, If You Smell What The Rock Is Cooking, Look, I don't care whose list you put who on, if you don't have The Rock on your top four, you're crazy. The things he came up with, the ingenuity, such an entertaining guy. Like him or hate him doesn't really matter. When it comes to work on the stick, he's on my Mount Rushmore. Again, I'm going to go back to the past a little bit. Number two, I got the nature boy Ric Flair. He's still cutting them promos today all these years. The styling and the profiling, rocking the alligator shoes, doing it like only he can do, riding Space Mountain. He's got more catchphrases than Tom Brady at Super Bowl rings. The Nature Boy, he could flat put it out there, and he could get wound up. And the more wound up he got, the more engrossed you would get in his promo. Incredible promo work. Number one on my mic work, the working man. He's wined and dined with kings and queens and ate pork and beans. I mean, the son of a plumber, if you will. My God, the man was a master on the mic. Just a true American icon. The American dream. That's right. Texas is owned the American dream. Dusty Rhodes, baby. Now, remember though, this was only the wrestler's edition. Managers were excluded. And look for any of the boys that are watching this that think that you were good on the mic and I didn't mention your name. Don't send me shade my way. It's all to work. Get over yourself. Announcing an appearance from former WWE star Matt Riddle, Major League Wrestling wrote, MLW today announced Matt Riddle will fight at MLW Intimidation Games 24 Live and exclusively on Triller TV Plus Thursday, February 29th at the Mel Rose Ballroom in New York City. Grab tickets at MLWNYC.com and at Eventbrite. The King of Bros is going to throw down live and exclusively on Thriller TV Plus. Sign up for your Thriller TV Plus subscription now and enjoy a free seven-day trial. After shattering all records for MLW web traffic and social media analytics, with his arrival in MLW, Matt Riddle now looks to wreck the competition when he gets in the ring in New York City live on Thriller TV Plus. Who will Riddle wrestle? League officials are in discussion with a select level of top tier fighters about a possible match. A bout announcement is expected in early January.
Going over the events that led to his concussion at AEW Wrestle Dream, Sammy Guevara said on Insight with Chris Van Vliet, I'm cleared, I'm good, that was crazy, you know, I do the cutter so much, and then the stupidest things. Oh, this cutter that I do all the time, this time just bumped my head on the canvas, and then saw the future. And if you go back there, you can tell, like, okay, maybe he's not good, but I didn't know at the time. I actually thought that they had a match booked for me that Wednesday, I thought it was good. And then it was until, like, a couple of days later, I was, like, really feeling it and then Ty Mello contacted the doctor are you dizzy no just like the lights are bothering me are you throwing up no no thankfully it wasn't like that but I had a headache and stuff and it was like the lights were bothering me like bright lights like my future is bright but yeah then they obviously took me off and let me chill and send me to some people to see but yeah that was like probably the longest I've been out of wrestling so far it's been since October 1st During that same interview, Sammy Guevara said this about becoming a father and his in-ring style. It's pretty cool for sure, and now it's got me thinking differently just in wrestling because I'm used to doing all the I'm crazy stuff, but now I'm like, yeah, I guess I can't be that crazy anymore. I don't know if we're going to dial it back, but I think we'll be more selective with how and when we do the crazy stuff. There was stuff in Lucha Underground, doing a moonsault 14 feet in the air to Jake Hager, who, bless his heart, tried to catch me, but there's only so much you can do. Speaking about joining the reformed Hurt Business faction, Carmelo Hayes told Vibe, shoot, that'd be cool. Right now, I'm so focused on what I got going on here in NXT, it's going to take a lot more than just showing up and dapping me up to get me over there. I'm not thirsty for any membership. If they want me, they can holler at me and we can talk business. Respect to them, though, because they're my brothers for real. With him having been cleared to compete for WWE, commentator for the company Corey Graves said this to Steelers takeaways regarding a return to in-ring action. I have a clean bill of health now, thanks. I actually got medically cleared a couple of years ago to perform in the ring again. I flirted with the idea and I'm waiting for a potential opportunity if it presents itself. More of a one-time thing like Pat McAfee has done, not as a full-time in-ring performer. Touching on talks he has had with those in WWE, New Japan star David Finley told Cultaholics Desert Island Graps podcast, I mean, my only WWE contact is my dad. My only contact needs to be my dad, so on one hand, it's never been talked about officially, but on the other hand, about every other time I go over for dinner, it gets talked about because he's like, yeah, you can come work with me. So it's like, mm -hmm. when I've accomplished all I need to accomplish in Japan, maybe I'll entertain the option, but for right now, I got a IWGP Global Heavyweight championship to win and make world famous. In a video posted to his TikTok, Drew McIntyre would end up taking a shot at CM Punk's ring gear at the recent WWE MSG live event. Here's the clip. Your Christmas has come and gone and what an awesome Christmas it was, but no time to rest. We're right into the WWE holiday tour. I'm in Boston right now packing to head to the TD Garden. It started last night in Madison Square Garden. Drew McIntyre's first ever main event at the Garden. Uh, Punk's first match in 10 years. And to be honest, you know, he looked pretty good. I was watching through the curtain. The fans were excited to see him. He looked pretty good in the rings against Dominic. There's no slouch, but we'll see if Punk does against the McIntyre or Rollins. And he seems to forgot his gear. He was wrestling in Undertale, so it looked pretty stupid, but... Yeah, looks like he hasn't missed a step, to be honest. Live event gate. Oh, it was just the biggest live event of all time for WWE. Get online, check the numbers. Look up shows with Rock, Hogan, Austin on them. Last night, blew it out of the water. I'm not saying this because well, Big Mac was in the main event, but I'm not, not saying that. And tomorrow, we head to Canada, Montreal. The next day, Toronto. The next day, LA. And because I'm such a good husband, I'll take a red eye from LA. Head back to Nashville. Celebrate the wife's birthday. Celebrate New Year's Eve. Set that resolution. What is it? Win the world title at day one. Finally win the championship in front of live fans. Because if I don't, I mean, what the hell has all this been for? As far as I'm concerned, this is a week-long boot camp. And day one is the final destination.
the other day. A quote from Goldberg was making the rounds, as many are curious if he will return to wrestling for AEW or WWE. Goldberg had said this about Vince McMahon. I owe him everything until we went to Saudi Arabia and he asked me to put Roman Reigns over and I had COVID. I remember calling him from my house and said, listen, here is the deal. I'll do it if you give me a retirement match. I did what he asked. As a performer, I was 56 years old. As a human being, you're conscientious about how you look in a bathing suit, especially two months prior to being in that bathing suit. You couldn't work out because you had COVID. I put myself in a horribly sh situation to get what I wanted to, but to satiate him and give him what he wanted. Steve Carey of Ringside News added, Goldberg's feelings on his retirement and Vince McMahon's alleged deception have come to light, but here's the kicker. There's no talk of his WWE comeback. Ringside News was told that his name is not being brought up in any conversations for a return match. Previously, Goldberg has mentioned wanting to be a part of Singh's retirement match, so we'll have to see if anything comes of that. Revealing that she was in attendance for a WWE event, Michigan State Senator Dana Polhanke wrote on X, Here we go, my first ever WWE Live, Grayson Waller insulting Detroit, jabroni. Hashtag WWE Detroit. Grayson Waller replied, Hi, Senator. Just a reminder that Detroit is an absolute hole. Legit the armpit of America. Despite being the leader of the Damage Control faction, Bailey has not had the greatest luck in WWE live events, as Ringside News writes. According to Cage Match, Bailey's last win at a WWE live event took place on March 1st, 2020, where she defeated Lacey Evans, and she has yet to win a match at a live event since. This near four year streak continued on the December 27th, 2023 WWE live event in Boston, Massachusetts, where she took the pin alongside. EO Sky in a loss to Bianca Belair and Shotzi. Here's the video of Bailey and EO Sky losing to Shotzi and Bianca Belair. Speaking of Bailey, she was recently spotted with adult film star Kendra Lust, who would endorse the Bailey is hot movement that has taken shape online. Posting this photo and writing on Instagram, ran into Bailey, hashtag WWE Detroit, as the sign said Bailey is hot and WWE Live was fun, hashtag Detroit at Little Caesars Arena. During one of his vlogs, WWE United States Champion Logan Paul reflected on this year in WWE, saying, I was really proud of this move because it's hard to do something original in the WWE. Some of the moments I've had this year in wrestling, I will remember for the rest of my life. This is actually my greatest accomplishment of this year. I went injury-free, but I did get close almost breaking my neck at Money in the Bank. Look, accidents happen, like when I almost broke Rey Mysterio's neck, but then saved him. Yes, that is the match where I became the United States Champion. If you followed my journey for 10 years now on the internet, I don't just do things to take part, I do them to take over. I fully plan on doing that with the WWE. The future is bright, and I'm going to make a lot of noise and disrupt the entire industry. At a WWE live event, Cody Rhodes would vow to win championship gold in WWE and give a fan a piece of a table. Here's the clip. I love it when we come back to 
to Boston and buy a little gold around my waist. Oh. We're not actually empty handed. In the spirit of the holiday season, I think somebody should get this piece of table. As it was previously reported that the WWE Slim Jim car had been stolen last week, Slim Jim's X account replied to a report writing, We found it. With Goldberg recently revealing that Vince McMahon did not honor his request for a retirement match in WWE, Ivar would respond to this on X, writing, If you are looking, I'll have that retirement match with you, Goldberg. Giving an update on the AEW status of Sean Spears, Sean Ross Sapp, a Fightful reported that we're told that Spears becomes a free agent on January 1st and the departure was amicable between he and All Elite Wrestling. Spears would respond to this news on X writing, what a wonderful time it has been. Thank you AEW for allowing me to be there from the ground level. It's been a fantastic five years of growth and personal development. This is a personal choice and one that is best for me and my family at this time. Thank you to all staff and talent alike for the memories. Number 10, most importantly, to the incredible fans of all professional wrestling. I love you guys, I really do. Giving an update on Sonya Deville, who has been out of action from WWE and was on the receiving end of a firearm charge earlier in the year, Ringside News wrote that Sonya Deville was arrested in New Jersey on a firearms charge, she had a firearm in her vehicle and did not have a proper permit for it. The incident took place on February 19th, but the public did not find out until the news broke on March 1st. Ringside News exclusively reported that WWE Creative was informed about Sonya Deville's February 19th arrest immediately, as revealed by Jim Wall 
Walsh of Courier Post, the charge against her has been resolved. According to the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office, Sonia DeVille successfully resolved the charge by completing a six-month pre-trial intervention program, concluding in late November. Her entry into the program was approved on May 25th, with consent granted based on a 2014 memo from the State Attorney General's Office. This memo considers entry into the program routine for cases with similar fact patterns. The Attorney General's memo on gun charges prompted by a prior case involving the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office emphasized that a prison term was not necessary or appropriate for individuals who inadvertently violate New Jersey's gun laws. Sonia DeVille suffered an ACL tear after injuring herself on the July 28th episode of SmackDown and has been out of action since then. Sonia DeVille's rehab is also going as well as it can, but don't expect her to return to the squared circle anytime soon. Regardless, we'll have to wait and see when she will return to the ring. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.